Okay, we're going to keep talking about conditional relative frequency, and this is finding possible associations between variables, lesson 15.2e. We can use conditional relative frequency to see if there's an association between two variables. So if you remember from the previous video, for finding conditional relative frequency, if a student in seventh grade, given that they prefer blue for a color, we would do 12 over this total 30. We have 12 thirtieths, which is equal to 4 tenths, or 40 hundredths, which is equal to 40%. That is the conditional relative frequency of a student in seventh grade, given that they prefer blue. We can find if a student's gender has an influence on their preferred flavor of ice cream. If there's no influence, the distribution of gender within each subgroup of flavor preference should roughly equal the distribution of gender within the whole group. That may have sounded confusing. Here's what that means. If there's no connection between a student's gender and ice cream flavor choice, the frequency amounts for each flavor choice will be close to or the same as the frequency amount of the entire group. So if there's no influence or association, the percentages would be like 40 and 41 percent. See how they're almost the same or they're close? Or it would be like 59 percent and 58 percent or 59 and 59. If there is an influence or association, the percentages would be like 40 percent and 32 percent. See how different they are? Or 59 percent and 68 percent or 12 percent and 90 percent. So in this problem, it's telling us to investigate a possible gender-specific difference in ice cream flavor preference. So first, let's look at this table. We have flavors of vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, and then we have the total. And then we have genders of boy, girl, and the total. We find the percent of all students surveyed who are boys. So for boys, all that are surveyed, the total is 11 and that would be 11 20ths because 20 is the grand total of all the students surveyed. We have 11 out of 20 that are boys that were surveyed. 11 20ths is equal to 55%. The second thing we do is we determine each conditional relative frequency. So the percent who are boys given a preference for vanilla, we have one and vanilla is four. So we have one fourth, which is 25 hundredths, which is 25%. And the percent who are boys, given a preference for chocolate, is 6 of 10, 6 tenths. That would be 60 hundredths, or 60%. And the percent who are boys, given a preference for strawberry, is 4 of 6. That's 4 6, which is approximately 66%. The 6 continues on. I drew a bar over it to show that, which is approximately 67% because the 6 kept going. Now, we interpret the results by comparing each conditional relative frequency to the percent of all students surveyed who are boys. So we know the boys are 55% of those surveyed. Vanilla was 25%. That's the conditional relative frequency. And for chocolate, we had 60% and strawberry was 67%. The percent of boys who prefer vanilla, this 25%, is much less than the percent of boys, 55%. So boys are less likely to prefer vanilla than girls. Now that's according to this table we have, this frequency table. The percent of boys who prefer chocolate, 60%, is a little more than this 55%. So boys are more likely to prefer chocolate than girls. And the percent of boys who prefer strawberry, the 67%, is greater than the 55%, so boys are more likely to prefer strawberry than girls. We know that boys were 55% of all surveyed, and their preference for vanilla was 25%, for chocolate was 60%, and strawberry was 67%. We can know the girls' percentages because it should total 100%. So if boys are 55%, girls would have to be 45% because it has to equal 100%. 55 and 45 
is 100. If boys' vanilla is 25%, then girls must be 75% because that should equal 100%. Same with chocolate and same with strawberry. So if we know a student prefers strawberry ice cream, there's a higher percentage for strawberry, we can make a prediction that the student is a boy. It's higher for boys and strawberry than it is for girls. And if we know a student prefers vanilla ice cream, we can make a prediction that the student is a girl. The percentage for vanilla will be higher if that's their preference. So we know vanilla is 75% for girls and only 25% for boys. It must be a girl. So keep in mind, when the conditional relative frequencies are the same or similar, there's no association between the variables. And when the conditional relative frequencies aren't similar, they're farther apart, there is an association between the variables. Now, if you're one of my regular subscribers, chances are you've watched all my videos in order. If you stumbled across this video and you're confused, go back to video 15.2a and watch all the 15.2 videos. This is 15.2e. Watch A, B, C, D, and then E again. And check this description for those links to those videos and links to 13.4a and 13.4b for my high school geometry videos about frequency tables, relative frequency, marginal, conditional, all of that. So that's it. We did it. We finished eighth grade math. This was the last lesson. And I'll see you in Algebra 1. I have an Algebra 1 playlist that will take you in consecutive order through the entire course of Algebra 1. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I wish you well as you journey forward in math. Bye.